Shalom, Shalom family. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith, Amuna, and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for joining me once again on the channel and for another teaching. Today is a part two that I promised of a teaching that I did on last week concerning names and what's in a name and the Father having called us by his name and what that means. And so we discussed those things last week and we came to a firm determination about what it means to be called by the Most High's name. And it is a wonderful thing to behold that we have been stamped and imprinted with the name of the Most High Yahuwah and that he has claimed us as his own sons and daughters. He has engraved us by granting us his likeness and his image. And we have been deemed his family and his kinfolk. We have been given his likeness and his character, or at least that's what he's doing in us as he perfects us from glory to glory and from faith to faith. And crucial in our perfection process is our submitting to the messenger that he sent. He's always giving us someone, a leader over us that we must submit to so that we can be perfected through our obedience. Yahusha, our master, learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And the father has given to us a leader, a king, a master for us to submit to who's been given his authority. And as we submit to the master, we are being changed and transformed and the father's image is revealing itself in and through us by and through his son Yahusha. But before we get into the discussion of Yahusha today, I would like to just revisit the topic of being named by the Most High for just a minute. After last week's lesson, my mother called me and we had a discussion about the lesson that I had just taught and about the father naming us and we discussed how the Most High had spoken to her as she listened to the message regarding adoption and how the Most High, when he adopts someone into his family, as a father, the first thing you do when you adopt a child is you change their name. You give them your name because they now belong to you. So you are marking them with your ownership and you are bringing them into your family and you're telling the world, this one belongs to me because I have given them my name. When the Most High called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees, he was living amongst pagan worshipers. His father was an idol maker and he worked in his father's trade. And one day the father got his attention as he was sitting, looking at the stars, trying to determine what the year was going to be like by reading the stars. And he happened to be doing that on a new moon. And as he was sitting, looking at the stars and trying to determine and prognosticating what the year would be like, he thought to himself, who made these stars? And he had a moment where the father caught his attention and he was able to minister to him. And he spoke to him on that night and told him, leave your family, leave your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. The father entered into covenant relationship with our ancestor, Abraham. And as he entered into this covenant relationship with him, he did one very crucial thing my mom pointed out. He changed his name. He entered into a relationship with Abram. His name was Abram at the time. He changed his name because he's saying, you now belong to me. You are no longer of your father's house. You are of my household. I am calling you, you belong to me. You are now part of my family and I'm gonna work my works through you and your descendants. So your name is no longer Abram, it's Abraham or Abraham. And not only did he change Abraham's name, he changed his wife's Sarai's name as well from Sarai to Sarah. Why did he do that? Because she was also a part of the covenant. The promise that the father intended to bring into our nation came through her very womb. We also see that the Most High changed Jacob's name, Jacob, Jacob. He was born Jacob. That is what his father Yitzhak named him. But his name was changed. Why? Some say because he was a trickster. And we have already done a lesson on that. And we know that he was not a trickster. 
He was an honorable, honorable man. His name was not changed because he was a trickster. His name was changed because he was being given a new mission, a new calling, and the father was adopting him into his family in such a specific way that it required a name change. So he named him Yasharal, which means upright, righteous one before the Most High. So when the father calls you to a new purpose, he changes your name. And as we continue our lesson today, we're going to see that Messiah and the book of Revelation indicates that he gets a name change. His mission and his calling will become different, so he will get a name change. Many of you, when you come into the awakening, one of the first things you do is you change your name. You add the Most High's name to your name in some profound and unique way. And the name change is indicative of adoption, yes. Awareness, yes. Revelation, yes. Being conformed to the Most High's character, yes. But the sign, it's a sign that some change has happened. A change in your thinking, a change in your awareness. Some change has happened and you want to exemplify that change by a change in your name, a change in your status. So I want to thank the Most High for speaking through my mom and bringing those revelations out as we discussed it on last week. I'm so grateful to him and how he speaks to us and and reveals his truths to us as we seek his face. So as we get into today's lesson, let us be reminded of what it means to be called by the Father's name and to have his name placed on us and the wonderful honor that we have to be children, kinfolk, of the Most High, conformed to his image, made in his likeness. What an honor that is. So let's get started today. We're going to be talking today about Messiah and is it appropriate to pray in his name? He who is in the image of the Father and he who has the name of the Father in him, how does that translate to us? We're going to talk about these things today. So let's get started. As we get started for today, I'd like to read a verse of scripture that was a pivotal verse that we read last week so that we can remind and refresh ourselves about the importance of this messenger that the Father sent to bring us out of Egypt and also who is the messenger sent to bring his salvation and the renewed covenant. So we'll be reading from Exodus or Shemut chapter 23 verses 20 through 23. Behold. I send an angel, a messenger, a malak. The plural form of the word messenger is malakim. Behold, I send an angel, a messenger, before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But. If thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I shall speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I will cut them off, meaning I will drive them out of the land and bring them under judgment. And so we see the Most High telling us that this messenger that he sent, I believe it to be Yahushua Hamashiach, went up out of Egypt with us and brought us into the promised land. He was that rock, that rock that followed them in the wilderness. And that rock was Mashiach. So we see the Most High working through his son, his messenger, his primary messenger, to bring us out of Egypt. Will he do it again? Will he send Messiah, perhaps unseen, as he did for our ancestors, to bring us out of this Egyptian bondage? Perhaps. Perhaps. So we're going to talk about how this verse of scripture relates to the renewed covenant and how the Father has chosen the Son to get his name not only on us, as in he has claimed us for himself, but also in us. I posted a prayer not too long ago, and someone in the comment section said, you have just introduced idolatry into your prayer by using the name of Yahusha in your prayer. And I thought, hmm, interesting. Aren't we instructed to pray in the name of Yahusha? 
But what exactly does that mean? And that is how this lesson came about. I took this question to the Father. And I said, Father, what does it mean to pray in the name of Yahusha? What does that mean? So we're going to talk about that today. What does it mean to pray in the name of Yahusha? Let's go to scripture. Matthew, Matayahu, chapter 18, verses 4 and 5. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. So we see Messiah referring to a child being received in his name. Now, the question is, who's speaking here? Who's speaking? What say you? Remember, Messiah tells us that I only speak the Father's words. So who's speaking here? Is the Father speaking or is the Son speaking? Whosoever receives a little child in whose name? Messiah's name or the Father's name? Let's continue on to see if the scripture speaks to us about these things. We're now reading in Mark or Marcus chapter 9 verses 38 through 40. And these are all verses in the King James Version. Many of you ask me what version of the scriptures that I use. I use the King James Version almost exclusively, and I take out some of the pagan names and I replace them. So that is why it looks like it's a different version of the scriptures, but it's just the King James. And John, Yehuganon, answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Yahushua said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which can do a miracle in my name that can likely speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part, meaning he who was not against us is for us. Let the man alone. If the man wants to cast out devils in my name, let him cast out devils. So I think we have a clearer picture here. So we see a man casting out devils in Yahushua's name? Or is it the Father's name? Which is it? What say you? Let's continue on. We also read in Marcus, or Mark chapter 9, verse 41, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Mashiach, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. I think we have found an answer. I'll read it again. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Mashiach, you belong to Messiah. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Brothers and sisters, the Father possessed us, and he still possesses us. We belong to him. But when he sent his son, Yahusha, to be the salvation that he sent, we had to become one with Yahusha so that Yahusha could deliver us to the Father. And you can't become one with someone and not have them put their name on you. When a woman marries a man, she takes his name. His name is placed upon her and she is a change of family. She's got a new family now because she has a new name. We are described in the scriptures as the bride of Mashiach because there had to be a union between the nation of Yasharal and the salvation that the Father sent. So we had to marry him. We all must marry him and become one and united with him. And as we become one with him, the character and the nature and the quality of the Father, the name of the Father that's in Him, transfers and translates to us. The salvation that the Father sent required us to link up with Messiah because He is the vehicle that the Father sent to deliver us and bring us to Himself. And in order to do that, we had to become one with Him. We had to marry Him. And as a result of that, we took his name. We took his name. Now, what name was that? It's the same name of the Father. 
To take the name of the Son is to take the name of the Father. Because remember, we read in Exodus or Shemut chapter 23 that the Father's name is in his messenger. And so if the Father's name is in his messenger and the messenger then comes and gives you his name, you've got the Father's name. That is how the Father placed his name in the nation of Yasharal through his son. We become one with his son. We become knit and united with him. We die with him and we are resurrected with him. And he places his name, which is the father's name in us. Hallelujah. To have Yahushua's name is to have the father's name. That is the only name he could give us because it is his name. He is our father's son. And he has given us that same sonship because he places upon us the name of the Father. Continuing. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And those things happened. We see our first century ancestors taking up serpents. We see them casting out devils. We see them healing the sick. Just as Messiah said, these things happened. And they're going to happen again by the power of the Most High. But going back to verse 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. In my name. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they'll speak with new tongues. In my name, they'll drink deadly things and it won't hurt them. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's all in the name of Yahushua. What does that mean? What does it mean that in Yahushua's name, these things happen? Does it mean if you say in the name of Yahushua, be done, it's going to be done for you? Perhaps. Let's talk more about it. Sticking with scripture. In Matthew, Matayahu, chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. We see the warning from our Messiah that there are going to be some people who are going to come and say, Listen, I'm Messiah. Believe in me. And those that come, they will lead the Most High's people astray. He's warning them, don't believe those who come and say they're in my name. Look at the fruit. The fruit will tell you whether or not they're in my name or not, whether they're in me or not. Continuing. Matayahu, Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So to be gathered together in the name of Yahushua, Yahushua is there. And if Yahushua is there, the Father is there, because the Father's name is in him. Continuing, But I know you, that ye have not the love of Yahuwah in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you shall receive. Yehukanon, John, chapter 5, verses 42, 43. Messiah is telling us here that he is come in his Father's name. And he also says, those who cast out devils in my name. So is Messiah teaching in his own name? Or is he teaching in the Father's name? So when Messiah says, in my name, he means the Father's name because he has the Father's name in him. Remember, we learned that early on. Messiah has the Father's name in him. So when he says, in my name, he means in the Father's name. And all that that means, the character of the Father, the nature of the Father, the power of the Father, the authority given to him by the Father, he possesses that. And he's showing you how to possess that as well through faith in him in obedience to the Father. He says, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. 
If another shall come in his own name, him you shall receive. Then came the Yahudim, the Jews, round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be Mashiach, tell us plainly. Yahushua answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe me not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. So brothers and sisters, I just really wanted to hone in on this. Messiah has said repeatedly in the scriptures that he came in his Father's name. But he also tells his disciples to do things in his name. To do things, to heal, to cast out devils in Messiah's name, is the same thing as to walk in the authority of the Father's name. They're the same, because Messiah has the Father's name in him. So if I say, in Yahushua's name, knowing that his authority is of the Father, is that wrong? Is that wrong? You tell me, what do you think? Is it wrong to say in Yahushua's name if you know that the name that's in him is the Father's name? It's something certainly to take before the Father and say, Father, what should I do? Should I be obedient to my master who tells me to pray in his name? Should I do that? I think so, because the Father clearly told us, this is my son, listen to him, obey his voice. In Exodus chapter 23, the Father says, obey his voice. So if his voice says, pray in my name, then we should pray in his name. So we're going to look at this phrase, in my name, in the Greek. In my name, epi, mau, onoma. Epi in the Greek means upon, on, at, before. It means a position. It's a position of, over, against, across. So it's on or over or upon. We see this word or prefix epi meaning upon, over, the outer, or after. It means attached to. We know that the skin, the outer layer of skin is called the epidermis. So this word epi, this prefix, has an idea of being on the outer level. Besides, it's on something. It's upon something. And then we look at mao. The word mao or mu means my, mine, my own. So, so far we have upon my own, on my own, against my own. And the final word? Onoma. Onoma means name. So this phrase is against my name, upon my name, on my name. The name used for everything, which the name covers. Everything, the thought or feeling of which is aroused in the mind by mentioning, hearing, remembering the name for one's rank, authority, interests, pleasure, command, excellences, deeds, etc. A person's reckoned up by name. Skipping down to the bottom, it says, from a presumed derivative of the base, a name, literally or figuratively, it means authority and it means character. The same thing we saw when we studied these things out in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament. We see an idea of authority and character. Messiah possesses the authority and the character of the Father. So to pray in his name is to pray in the authority and the character of the Father, which Messiah possesses. That is the only way we're going to get it, brothers and sisters. In this new covenant, this renewed covenant, the way that we work to sonship, the way that we inherit sonship is through the Son, the salvation that the Father sent. So we become one with him and we possess his character, which is the father's character. And we possess is his authority, which is the father's authority given to him. So the idea of praying in Messiah's name is standing in his character, his righteousness, and standing in his authority, in his authority. Continuing. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 39. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Peter, or Kapha, he had just preached. And the men, the people who heard him were moved. They were moved to repent. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. 
and said unto Peter, Kapha, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter, Kapha, said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahusha. Be immersed in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. That's how we get the Father inside of us, brothers and sisters. We must receive the name of the Father, which is in the Son. The Father placed his name in his Son and sent his Son to become one with us so that we could receive the name of the Father stamped in us. In the original covenant, we kept sinning. The Father was molding us and making us and trying to stamp his name upon us. We kept looking to the nations, looking to the nations, kept looking to the nations. And finally, the father judged us, but he didn't give up on us. He said, I've got this plan. I've had this plan since the beginning. I'm going to send my son and my name is in him. And I'm going to allow my son to become one and merge himself with the people whom I had already called the nation of Yasharal and he will impress upon them my character and my authority. And when he does, I will be in them, finally. For the promise is unto you and unto your children and all that are far off, even as many as Yahuwah Elua shall call. This is a promise to us, to the people who were chosen, whom the Most High has placed his name upon, through his son. Continuing. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know that faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So Peter Kapha had just brought forth healing to this man, and he's telling, it is through the name of Yahusha and faith in his name that brought about the healing of this man. Faith in his name, faith in, in the authority that he's been given, and his character, which is the character and the authority of the Father. Continuing, and when they had set him in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? So Peter healed a man and the authorities didn't like it. So they called him in and they said, answer for yourself, what power and what name have you healed this man? We wanna know how this happened. What power, what authority? And then Peter, Kapha, filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Yasharal, if we, this day be examined of the good deed done to this impotent man by what means he is made whole be it known unto you all and to all the people of Yasharal that by the name of Yahusha Hamashiach of Nazareth whom ye crucified whom Yahuwah raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. Yahusha is the salvation that the Father sent. And there are some in the awakening right now who are denying him. To deny him is to deny salvation. He is the salvation that the Father sent. There is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. We must cleave to him. And when we cleave to him, he will deliver us unto the Father. It's the only way. We can't do it by keeping Torah ourselves on our own. We tried that and we failed and we will always fail to keep Torah without the Ruach within. The only way to get the Ruach within is that you've got to receive the word. You've got to receive the power, the character, the nature of the father, which he placed in his son. So you receive his son and you receive the father. You receive his character and his nature and his spirit, his Ruach HaKadosh.
And that spirit, that Ruach in you, helps you to keep Torah, helps you to live a righteous life. We need him. Is it appropriate or inappropriate to pray in the name of Yahusha? It is completely appropriate to say in the name of Yahusha. It doesn't mean that by praying that way that you're going to get the answer to your prayers. It doesn't mean that you can rubber stamp every prayer with in the name of Yahusha and it's just going to happen. It's not. It's not. It's a reminder to us. When we say in the name of Yahusha, it's a reminder that it is in the authority of the Father and the power of the Father placed in the Son that we're seeing these things take place. It's a reminder to us the authority that we have in Him. You can use it or not use it. That's up to you. But to condemn someone for praying in the name of Yahusha is out of line and out of order. It's out of order. So the crux of the matter, brothers and sisters, is this is about authority. Praying in the name of Yahusha, standing in the character of the Father, which is in the Son, standing in his authority, standing in his name, Praying in his name is praying in the authority given to him by the Father, which has now been passed on to us. That's what it's all about. You can use the name or you cannot use the name. Our ancestors, the disciples, the Talmudim, they used his name. They prayed in his name. And look at the miraculous things that they experienced. We're going to read two more verses of scripture before we end for the day. Revelation chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elua, and he shall go no more out, meaning once you enter in, you don't have to leave ever again. And I will write upon him the name of my Elua, and the name of the city of my Elua, which is the new Jerusalem, the new Yerushalam, which cometh down out of heaven from my Alua, and I will write upon him my new name. With a new name comes a new calling. Whenever there's a new calling the Father has for you, he changes your name. So I wonder what the new name and the new calling is for Yahusha. It makes me wonder. But for all intents and purposes in this verse of scripture, we know that the Father has desired from the beginning to write his name upon us. We are called by his name. He says of my people who are called by my name. We are called by his name. But the process that we have undergone all this time was to be stamped and imprinted with his name so that we could take on his authority and his character. That's what he wanted. He wanted us to walk in the same level of authority and his character as Yahusha did, as Yahusha does. Who writes the Father's name upon us? Who does that? Yahusha does. He accomplishes the Father's work and manages to write the Father's name that was written upon him onto us. I'm going to read it again. And I will write upon him the name of my Alua, the name of Yahusha's Alua is Yahuwah. He will write, he will stamp and imprint the Father's name upon us and grant us his authority and his power. And skipping down to verse 21, and he says, And to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and as set down with my Father on his throne. Do you see that, brothers and sisters? Messiah sat with the Father on his throne, faithful, a faithful servant on the Father's throne. And he's going to be elevated and have his own throne. And he's going to have people sit with him on his throne, just as he sat with the Father on his Father's throne. What we see here is a picture of overcomers. Do you want to be an overcomer today, brothers and sisters? Do you want to be an overcomer? Do you want a crown of life placed upon your head? Do you want to walk in power and authority? Do you want to be kings and priests? It's only one way to get that. You've got to allow Messiah, Yahushua Hamashiach, to write the Father's name upon you. And how do you do that? How do we get that? 
You have to believe in him. You have to believe that he is the salvation that the Father sent. You have to believe in him when he tells you to keep the Most High's commandments, that this is something that's for us today and not done away with. You have to obey the Father who now speaks to the world through his Son. You receive him in intimacy and he takes you and he brings you into union with the Father by giving unto you the Ruach HaKadosh that lives within you. That is your link to the Father. This is the Father's Ruach that's now living on the inside of you, helping you to keep the commandments that you couldn't keep on your own. There's no other way to get it in us. It was always external to us. And if you read the scriptures, you'll see the Ruach came upon him. The Spirit came upon him and he was able to do these great things. The Spirit came upon him. Well, in this instance, with Messiah, the Spirit, the Ruach doesn't come upon you. It comes in you. It becomes one with you. And you possess the Ruach. The Ruach of the Father is in you, doing mighty works and mighty acts and helping you to live free of sin. That's the way to do it. It comes with belief. It comes with confession. It comes with obedience. That is how it's done. And so the question is, should we pray in the name of Yahusha? I say yes and Amen. Do you have to pray in the name of Yahusha in order to have your prayers answered? I don't think you do. I believe it's honoring to him. I don't think you do. But then it's not for me to decide. It's for you to get into the Father's presence and ask him, do I have to use Yahusha's name in order to have my prayers answered? And then do what he says. Well, I thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining me once again on the channel and for another lesson. I pray that this lesson edified you. I pray that you learned something. And I pray that the Father continues to minister to you through it as we ponder these things. We don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. I certainly don't. So we submit ourselves unto the Father for him to teach and instruct us the things that he desires for us to know. And we honor his son and we listen and obey him because the Father told us to do so. And if praying in his name is honoring to the Son, I'm going to pray in his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness unto your children. And thank you for sending your Son to get your name stamped and imprinted on us, not just merely calling us by your name, but having us imprinted with your name your authority, and your character. It's all about sonship, brothers and sisters. To have the Father's name is to be a son, is to be a daughter. Hallelujah. And Yahusha came to bring us that. May the Most High Baruch and keep you, brothers and sisters. And may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, shalom, peace every day. And may we all relish the fact that we have been called and chosen and the Father sent his Son to take his name and place it in us, not merely on us. We are so thankful today. May we honor the Son and worship the Father as we have been instructed to do so. All praises to the Most High and honor and esteem to our King, our Master, Yahushua HaMashiach. Shalom and Shalom, brothers and sisters.
Thank you.